Hello, everybody. Zach Couples, physical therapist here. And folks, if you've ever dealt with any ankle pain whatsoever when you're squatting, you definitely have to watch this case study where I go through my main man, K Tren, and we troubleshoot his ankle pain. You may remember that I evaluated Kevin a few months ago, which you can watch that right up there. And you'll be able to see that uh, some of the things that I did with him from a shoulder pain perspective, but now we're gonna work on some of the ankle trouble that my boy has been dealing with. A brief background. So Kevin has been dealing with this for a few months now. He noticed uh, left ankle pain started creeping up a bit once he finished doing um, some snowboarding. And so he started noticing this pain is on the medial aspect of his ankle, and he's noticing it during a few different things. He's noticing it, noticing it during any deep squatting. He's an Olympic lifter, so his Olympic lifts are shot, can't do them, so triple extension-based stuff, and heel raises. His concern was like, did I fracture something or something along those lines? And so what I did before I jumped into the evaluation, as you'll see, is I checked for fractures with a tuning fork test. That was okay. We did neurodynamic testing because the, the track thought maybe we're dealing with like a tarsal tunnel sort of thing. And he didn't seem to have any swelling or tenderness to palpation. Now, the cool thing was Kevin had been keeping up with the moves that I had given him previously about four times a week. And he actually came in looking pretty good had some really nice changes in his range of motion. And actually, you can see in, in this uh, picture right here, this was a shoulder flexion from the beginning of the first session. And then this was uh, on the far right, him cold the second session three months later. So I think that looks pretty good. It's a pretty nice change. But now what you're going to see in this case, folks, is you're going to see me not just retest everything that we looked at in the first case, but you're also going to see how your boy Big Z tackles ankle range of motion, knee range of motion, and things of that nature. So let's go ahead and we'll run through the assessment piece and see what we find. Okay. Yes. And then go ahead and drop down. Do it again. Go ahead and drop down into a squat just so we can see what happens there. Any discomfort with that? Uh, just a little bit. Oh, right here. So you feel a little bit at the bottom? Yep. Okay. And go ahead and come up and go back down again just so we can kind of see what ankles are doing. And so you can kind of see there, and my man's kind of already flat to begin with, but a little bit of discomfort with that. Okay, so we can use that as our test retest. Because you said deep squatting was the big one, yeah? Yeah. Okay, let me have you line your back. All right, so with the hip flexion. Right there. Right there is when I see you veer out. That's about 110, we'll say. Hip flexion, we said 110, ER, 60, IR, 40, and leg raise, right about there, I'm going to call that a solid 75, we'll say. Um, now I'll just look at knee extension, which is pretty good, knee flexion, pretty close to heel to butt. All right, so uh, SLR is more by 10 degrees since I last saw you, so that's cool. Let's see what we got on your right side. Same thing, about 110. That's a little less. I'm going to call that 45. And that's about 45 as well. So I think that you were limited on that one last time. But that's, hang on, just let it chill. Right there, that's also about 75. Okay, so you gained about 10 degrees on your SLR there as well. And hip rotation's about the same. The extension, so I'm gonna grip up top, pull up. Looks like you got a little less knee extension on this side in comparison to the right. And heel to butt's the same. So limited knee extension on the left. So we got like, so you got hyperextension of like five on that side and then that, you got a little bit, but it's just not, I don't know if you can sense a difference on that. Right there, that's about what I got on the pull up there on that side. And then here, it just goes up way easier. Upper body, we'll first look at ER. 
So that was, I believe, 85 last time. I got you at 90. We got 90. I can get you there. That's good. Right about 85 is when you start to veer out. Nice. That's better. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't even get you into the test position last time. Yep. So, nice job. Awesome. Okay, same song and dance. Same thing, 90, 90, easy. Oh, hang on, I'm going pretty fast, but this is much less tension. About 80, maybe a little bit less on that one. Yeah, that's better too. Like I, I, like I said, I couldn't even get you in test position last time. Um, let's look at Obers. Or actually, no, before we do that, let me do head turn. Okay. Not all the way, but I would say both are comparable. You were a lot more limited on the uh, last time. That okay? Yep. So I can get you to extend. At least I think. Let me see. Yeah. You just adduction about 25%. And I'll look at AB since your extension's there. 30. Head on this side. So before you were minus 10, so that's an improvement. 25%. We did. Yeah, I couldn't even get you into hip extension. So, which is why I didn't check abduction. Typically, I won't check it unless you have it. Uh, you're getting a little bit there. I'm just gonna call that zero. That's better. That okay? Yep. And a little bit more AB on that one. So call that 40. So that's all better. Cool. Okay, uh, so all your like baseline tests are more than I last saw you, which is good. You want my foot to hang off? No, just you're you're good. Yeah, so I'm gonna just pull you up there. And if this bothers you, please tell me. So looks like you go into E version pretty quick. I'm gonna call that like five. Anything there? No. No. Okay. And then how's that there? Yeah, you're limited in plantar flexion more than anything on this side. I'm going to call that 35. And you can see, you know, so if I uh, zoom in here, my main man k has got fairly flat feet. Normally, arch would be preserved when you're not weight bearing, but when I see it like that, that's generally an indication that the feet are a little flatter. Okay, so we said that um, inversion, lots, 45, 50, anything there? No. No? And then eversion, I'm going to grab the calcaneus for that. Actually have a lot, so you, you would definitely be someone when we kind of saw you in standing where your feet flatten and you, you got everted calcanei. So no discomfort when I did any of that? No. Yeah. How's that? Fine. Not much big toe extension. Lots of flexion, which makes sense. You, you wouldn't have big toe extension since you're more pronated, deverted. So if you, had, if you had more of a supinated foot, it would be easier to extend the big toe because the uh, first ray could drop. Yeah. So that's about 15, we'll say, in both positions. We'll see how we got compared to this side. Same song and dance. A lot more dorsiflexion here. All right? Yep. Okay. And then plantar flexion you actually have. Inversions 45. <clears throat> yeah, you got a lot more eversion on this side, so eversion's limited there. Same song and dance. Cool. All right. 
Um, last thing I want to see, can we just take a look at your standing foot posture? So we can kind of point out what we're seeing. And so you can see my man's got fairly flat feet and that kind of corresponds to what we would see on the table. You can see, there we go. He's got a bunion on that left hand side, which given the amount of eversion you got without the big toe extension, <laughs> makes sense. And then from the back, we can see that the calcanei are flattened pretty good. A little bit more on the left than the right. As you can see, K. Tran has made some incredible improvements since I last saw him. I mean, that shoulder flexion measure alone, I couldn't even get him to bring his arms to his sides. And now he's up in the 80s. That's crazy. So very cool stuff that I've seen. But what I want to do is I want to point out just a couple different things that, that stood out to me. If you look at the screen here, here's a few things that stand out to me with um, Kevin's measures. And so just so you can kind of uh, see what I'm talking about, like when I talked about the shoulder flexion improvements, I put the imp uh, what we started in this right here. And then the one that's in parentheses, that was the initial conditions when I saw Kevin uh, three months ago. And so you can see nice improvements in shoulder flexion, ER and the shoulders was better. Nice change in hip flexion, straight leg raise, lots of good things. These are going to be the most important measures that will stand out for me, though. So the, the painful squat, that's going to be our big comparable sign that we'll go back to to make sure we're heading in the right direction with Kevin. Um, the other ones that stand out to me is the knee extension deficit and the crazy amount of eversion that Kevin had. So... Kevin, uh, you know, typically when I'm working with people, I don't see full eversion, like rarely. But but Kevin's someone who actually has a pretty flat foot, and, and this is very common that we would we ought to see with someone who's a wide infrasternal angle presentation. It's just weird because I just haven't seen that that often. So it's not like in his case he's flattening through the midfoot or things like that. It's literally the foot is pronated. And so what I think is going on is when that happens, you have an eccentric position on the medial side of the ankle, and then the outer aspect is a little bit more concentric. And so then, as you could see, when he descended into the squat, that just collapsed even further. And so what's likely happening, because Kevin is a wide infrasternal angle person, is he's got more internal rotation demands when he squats, he has a limitation in internal rotation on the left that he cannot overcome. And the way that he creates the internal rotation is through the medial ankle. And that's why you see the significant amount of pronation, calcaneal eversion, etc. Now, you might look back at the numbers and the hips and you're like, well, Zach, my man Katran has 60 degrees of ER and he's got 40 degrees of IR on the left hip. And that's true. He most certainly does. That appears to be full range of motion. But folks, I think that that measure is a lie. And here is why. You have to look at his right side. So on his right side, he's got 45 degrees of hip external rotation, which we would think, okay, that kind of makes sense for a wide ISA person. But this doesn't. He's got beyond physiological normal internal rotation on the hip. And so when you look at the ER and IR and compare them side to side, we're starting to see a little trend, aren't we? We see a slight deficit in IR on the left, and we see a deficit of ER on the right. And that, my fine fam, is a right oblique oriented pelvis, meaning I have someone who is a wide infrasternal angle. And then what happened was we saw a concentric position of the left posterior outlet, and then it made the, the right posterior more eccentric. This is what creates that oblique angle, and then he turns to the right. And that's where you see this asymmetrical presentation in the hip rotation. It's very subtle, and that's because Kevin's kind of a, a flexible, floppy guy. At least it appears that way in the hips. But then when you trickle down even further, you see the knee extension loss. You see the lack of dorsiflexion on the left side. 
all of those things are little tripwires that are going off in my mind thinking, hey, you know what, his IR looks good, but there's these other measures that are just showing me that that's not the case. And that's where you have to look at not just the involved side, you have to look at the person and paint a picture of a movement pattern that they are using and seeing how that might manifest potentially in symptoms. And so we're going to try to tackle a few different things in this particular case. Seeing this, I know that I need to improve that oblique axis presentation, meaning we got to drive internal rotation on the left and external rotation on the right. And so if Kevin is on this oblique axis, I have to literally try to get him to go the other way. And that's really what we're going to be focusing on. We want to try to get that first, see what happens to the distal measures as we do that. And if we get some improvements in the hips, but I still see some issues with knee extension or ankle motion, then we're going to have to do some local stuff to target that. So let's see how that plays out with this first move that I selected, which is the left offset hook line tilt with hip shift. The reason why I'm choosing this particular activity is because it's going to allow him to start driving that turn to the left. He's in an E-yard position, so it's a very early amount of internal rotation that he's going to have to drive as he loads into that left side. And so we're going to see how that goes, and you're going to see some interesting troubleshooting that I have to do in order to get him to get the most out of this move. You're going to be on your back, just like so, ball between the knees, hands on your lower belly. I want you to get a little bit of inside heel pressure to start. And then you're going to curl your hips, not bridging. So curl the hips, keeping the abs relaxed. You're going to feel some glutes. And then what you got to do is keeping weight on the inside heels, I need you to pull your left knee back and push your right knee forward. So not this, right? You're going to keep everything in a straight line like a train track like that. And if you get it right, you're going to feel groin on the left. You'll feel a little bit of glute max, okay? You're going to hold that for five breaths. And breathing like we talked about before. In through the nose, Superman blowing the wind. All right? Give it a shot. So I want, yep, everything straight line. Actually, you probably move your feet just a little bit wider because you're, you're pretty yard right there. Okay, so hands on the lower stomach. I don't want that kicking in whatsoever. Okay, let's see your tuck first. Sorry, I missed it. Okay, so relax because I saw your head moving a little bit. This has to stay very chill, so slowly curl. Think about pushing your knees forward. Like that. So like, that's the movement I want. Okay, do it again. <laughs> it's tough, huh? What? Uh, no, you're that's arching. That's yeah, way. yeah, I need that way. There, there. Okay. Got a little bit of glute? Yep. Awesome. Okay, now slowly pull this hip back and then push that hip forward or that knee. You should get more glute on the right and a little bit of groin on the left. Feel that? Awesome. Hold position. Let's have you go five breaths. So silent in. Long exhale. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Nice. Awesome. And then just keep that shift. You want to shift a little more each time, Kev. Good. Awesome. Keep shifting. And rest. How was that? Good. No issues? No. Okay. So the only thing I was seeing is um, you're turning the feet out like a little bit. So I'm actually not going to coach anything on that necessarily. What I want to do is 
Um, just because you, you evert a lot, I'm going to see if I can cheat you into some inversion by using some wedges on this, okay? And we'll just see if that makes a difference at all. So um, you could use, I don't, you got wedges at home or use your Olympic lifting shoes? Uh, I got a platform thing. Oh, you do? Awesome. Okay. Nice. Is that okay? Are you able to get your feet uh, flat, or is this nah, too? This is too uh, much, isn't it? Oh yeah! Wow. Should I move it down? Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Let's try that. A Go a little lower on this one too, because I need your feet to be flat. Is that even? Well, that might be too great, much high of a grade. Yeah, that's interesting. So you can't get this down, which makes sense because you don't have the big toe extension. Am I, like, uh, yeah, I don't want that. But I'm, I'm talking about the first med head. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, that's interesting. So this actually might be too high of a wedge. Um, let me slide that out. Let me just see how you do with something like that, but flatten the feet. Yeah, no, that's an issue too. Okay, I'm not gonna go with that then. That's interesting. I'm actually glad we, we tried that. So let me just make sure your feet stay like that. Maybe let's, um, cheat you out this way a little bit. So I'm gonna do that to try to get more inversion or plantar flexion as opposed to the uh, using the wedges. Okay. Try it again. Yeah. So if you're cramping, you're not getting the IR. That's why. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna get you out there again. Get a little bit of inside heel pressure. Okay, got it? Yeah. Okay. Curl. Yep. Shift. Uh, you want to shift right. It's, yep, you're only going to go right to left because we want to get the ER on the right and then load into the left without problems. Got it? Yep. Awesome. Go for five. And go ahead and just keep pushing right knee forward, pulling left knee back so you can see right here. I'm trying to create a little bit of side to side difference so that way we can really load into that left side, which will hopefully allow them to get more IR. Good. It's awesome. And then just keep pushing. Keep that shift, keep that shift. How was that? Awesome, I'm gonna have you do one more. That was good though. That's so interesting that the wedges, um, you can't, I wonder if when you do your Olympic lifting shoes, is it, if it's a similar phenomenon. If my toes lift up? Yeah, well, you just can't get the first med head to contact the ground. Cause you only got about 10 degrees of big toe extension. It's kind of interesting, wasn't it, that he had so much cramping in the left hamstring. But generally, if you see any cramping when you're coaching someone through a specific intervention, they're probably just not getting the movement action that you desire. And so you got to make it a little easier. And my initial thought was to try the wedges. But then I, you could see he couldn't keep the first med heads on the ground. So then guess what he's doing? He's just going to the outside of his feet. That's not going to get him the pelvic changes that we oh so desire. So what I opted to do instead was have him just elevate the left foot. And basically what this does is if I have an elevation on that side, he can't shift as far into the left hip. So it's a way of grading the amount of internal rotation that he's trying to produce on that left side. So let's see how that went. Added the block just to see if we could minimize cramping on that left side because then it's, you're not going to be able to load as much into that. So it's going to minimize the IR demands. So same tuck, make sure your abs are relaxed. You got your heels? Awesome, go for it. Perfect. Awesome, that looks good. And so you can See right there, he's able to keep the first med head down, whereas when I tried to uh, invert the uh, foot with the wedge, we did not get that happening.
that okay? Is that better? Yeah. Awesome. So let's see what we got after that. I'd say it's about five more. It's probably 115 now. That actually feels more. 45. And that's a little more 80. Let's see what we got on this side. That's definitely more. That's probably about 120. That's also more. I'm going to call that 55. Not all the way. That's still about 45. That's also 80. Let's see. You're good. Yeah, it's still, you still got way more on this side. Let's look at flexion because that's actually better. I'll call that 120. And that's also better too. 120. That's going to be number one. All right. All right. Uh, questions about that one? Let me see you lie on your uh, side, so we'll do obers, and then we'll zoom into the ankles and see what we got with that. Try that again. Definitely a little more. I'm going to call that 50%. The AB was a lot more. Let me see the uh, other side. 40 That's a little tighter. Minus five. Just means you're rotated. So dorsiflexion is about the same, but you do have plantar flexion. Still a lot of inversion or eversion. Inversion's better, but that's definitely more. Big toe is still about 10. Uh, yeah, a little bit more play though when I dorsiflex you. I would say it's about 15. And we got eversion to go on that side. Big toes are still pretty stiff. Now, if you go to the screen, you can see we got some really nice changes with my main man, Katran. Tons of improvements in shoulder flexion. Hip flexion was baller status. We got the external rotation to open up. Remember, I said that was going to be a big number for Kevin and some nice improvements in the straight leg raise. Also, you know, I didn't mention it, but we got ankle plantar flexion to improve. That was a little bit limited. So lots of positives overall. Things that I wasn't super happy about was squat was still uncomfortable. Knee extension didn't change. And even though hip external rotation improved, it's not full. And so my next thought then was like, okay, I gave him that move, got some decent changes but he still has pain when he stands. So perhaps we need to drive a lot of the same qualities just with a more challenging movement. And so that's where I opted to this next movement, which is a lateral squat with a front foot elevation. And so what I did with the first was we used right glute max to try to drive that turn. This is the same, same thing right here. Instead of having this oblique axis turning this way, I'm going to use right glute to push me into the left side, and then you're going to see a uh, frontal plane hip shift happen. This is going to get us ER on this right hip and hopefully IR on the left, but let's see if that actually happened. What you should feel on this is you're going to feel glute meds on both sides. You want to use your right glute med and glute max to push you into the left, okay? And then I'm going to use a weight to assist with that so we can get the IR. And so I would go like... Yeah, maybe a little bit wider than hip width apart. Okay. Weight's kind of right be between the legs like this, but start with most of your weight on your right side. Uh -huh. Okay? And so what you want to do, Kev, is you're going to get, since um, inside heel and big toe base, so first mat head, mm. you want to use that to push you to the left. Now as I push, I want to think about my right hip dropping down, my left hip coming up. So if you want, and I would do this before you add the weight, yeah, put your hands on your hips, and you want to feel right down, left up like that, okay? Now, here's the thing that you're doing. I want to show you. You want to think foot, knee, hip, chest, eye, all over the left leg. So it should be this. You're doing this. Oh, 
right? Then you're not loading into that side. I need that to happen right there. So just do a couple without the weight first, seeing if you can sense the hips going in that oblique angle like that, right? And then once you have that and you feel like you got it, you're going to add the weight into the mix, reach in over this way to see if it helps enhance the load into the left, okay? Go ahead and try it out. Try it without weight first on here. It'll make it easier on there because the step will reduce the IR demands. It'll make uh, swiveling the hips a little easier. So unlock the knees, get a little, good. Yeah, there, a little bit of that action. There you go. Elvis Presley would have been proud. So come back over. So I want, go ahead. That, yep, so use that side to push you. Are you feeling a little glutes on either side? Uh, this side. This side, not so much this? A little bit of glutes. Okay, yeah. I, I can take a little bit. So oh. I'm, <laughs> did you get a cramp? Oh yeah, growing cramp. Which side? Uh, left side. Ah, interesting, okay. So that's, again, oh, boy. IR's a little. I'm gonna die today. <laughs> Um, Give it a shot. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Try it again. All right. So I'll start right here. Right. Yep. Get weight on your left heel. Do you feel that? Yeah. Okay. How's that there? Okay. Is that okay? So what I'm noticing, I think this is why you're getting groin. Yeah. Is when you go. Yeah. Keep your hips pointing forward as you do it. You're getting a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So okay. you want to keep it a little bit more forward as you do it. All right. If it's if it's still a little too much, I might have to lessen the IR amount. Yeah. So there's where I want you. Okay. How's that? So like a little more sitting back. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Don't feel like you're gonna cramp. Just try five breaths with that. Try to do the arms. I'm gonna try to reach it. Just reach your right. Just reach your right. Just reach your right a little bit like that. Reach my left. Or le right to left. Yeah, right arm going. Yeah, yeah. That's where I'm gonna put the weight. Awesome. That looks pretty good. So we got everything lined up. Hips are not turned. Pretty oblique, I like it. Good. How was that? Good. That was okay? Yep. No Let's, no great, no yeah. I think because you were turning out of it is why it was happening. Right. So try it with the weight. So with the weight, what you're gonna do is basically that. Okay. Right there. So just have your have the weight almost yeah, going towards your you. left big toe. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So just so you can see what we got on the side. Just like that. He's not too hingy. Things are looking pretty good. Feel okay? Awesome. Great breathing. It's all good? Yep. Sweet. It's pretty good. Maybe try one more. One more. Mm-hmm. For the gipper. And you got glute meat on both sides and yep. awesome. Looks good. If you can get a little bit more, um, I think you're getting a decent amount of hyperextension. That's all. Just really think about the hip scooping down on the right. Yeah. Hip square, hip square. Right there, right there. That's where you want to be. Awesome. Really nice work. I'm going to get you like that just to help turn you a little bit to the left. Great. Get that in just a little tighter. Nice work. Keep your foot flat. 
Left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot, left foot. All I'm seeing is, there we go. Yeah, so Kev was losing that right there, but now you're able to get it. Awesome. Okay? Yep. Let's see what happened, my man. I'll have you lie on your back. That's pretty good. That feels a little easier. 120. It's about the same, so we got more hip flexion, which is good. And that's even more. There we go. That feels cleaner. Still a lot of IR, but we got 60 ER now. And probably about five more degrees of hip flexion. That's pretty good. It's about 145. I guess we needed to go after your ankles to really get your shoulders to loosen up, dude. Yeah, I guess so. That's about the same. All right. Did we get knee extension? That does have a little bit more bounce, actually. I would say, I don't know if you can sense that. It's still not your other side, but. Yeah. Um, better, I'm gonna say that's better. Okay, uh, let me see Obers. So go ahead and face that way. Again, better. Go ahead and flip to the other side. I'm going to call that 75%. I can get you to extension now, but I'm not dropping you. That's better. You got more dorsiflexion now. That's the first time that's budged, I would say. Sweet. Did we get big toe? No. It's a little tighter. Yeah, big toe's still pretty restricted. Okay, uh, go ahead and stand up, try your squat now. Let's just see what we got. Okay, go ahead. How's squat feeling? Uh, more tolerable. Awesome. Yeah, more tolerable. Perfect, okay, great. So I'm gonna have that be your second move then. And there you can see pretty nice changes with that one. And that was the first time we got a change in symptoms with a squat, which I'm pretty stoked about. So my hypothesis reigned somewhat true, even though he was still hurting a little bit. I thought his performance overall was pretty good. He did have a tendency, and as you can see, that I corrected to where he wanted to go back and turn to the right. So we tried to do as much as we could to try to minimize that so that way we could get the pelvic changes that we needed. Now, if you go to the screen right here, you can see, again, it's crazy how much shoulder improvements we're getting with this. But now we cleared up the external rotation at 60 degrees, felt pretty solid. We got some nice improvements in hip extension. Squat didn't hurt as much. And then this was key. The knee was starting to get a little bit more flexible, but it wasn't all the way. And so when I'm looking at this now, it's like you've got a, about 120 degrees of hip flexion. So that's definitely going to get him within the external rotation range in the hips, which is cool. We got the ER to go. So we can probably safely say that he's at least able to reduce the oblique axis representation. But I'm seeing this loss of IR on the knee. And so now it's like I, we got the proximal components. Let's see what happens when we work our way down a little more distally to see if we can drive internal rotation that way. And so what I opted to do here were some manual techniques to try to restore knee extension. Let's see how that goes first. Let's see if we can get uh, a little bit more knee extension on that side. I'm actually going to put one of the wedges underneath your rear on your right side. So that way I tip you left. Yep, yep. So that way I'm kind of, we're basically driving the same rotation into that side. This just can be a little more passive. We'll keep the knee bent as well, because that should help us. So basically, just trying to recreate that hip position that we got earlier. Right. 
And the first thing I want to do, I'm just curious just by doing that. Yeah, it's still limited. So you need this. Go ahead and squeeze gently. So press your cat, your knee down. Yeah, rest. Go ahead. Rest. Go ahead. Rest. So I'm just trying to drive that knee extension. So I'm going to twist you into a little bit of tibial IR. Just gently push into me. Try to straighten your knee. Just uh, don't. Just meet my resistance. We're gonna to count to about 10. One, two, three. Rest. Is that okay? Yep. Yeah, you know, we gotta go ahead. Push. Awesome. And again. Good. So basically, I'm, I'm flexing you maximally. So that way, it's going to maximize the anterior glide. Go ahead. So now you don't have the hamstrings really able to check uh, anterior tibial translation because they're, in theory, short proc or distally. Does that make sense? Yeah. Go ahead and press. Good. And it's not too bad. do a little bit of hands-on with that. I'm going to try to glide you a little bit anteriorly myself, just see if I can get it. I mean, it's definitely more bounce than when we started. Try it again. Go ahead. Push, 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 Awesome. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. Now, I was just checking your tibial rotation. Looks like you got a lot of ER, not as much IR. So even though screw home is the reverse, I'm going to try having you do the screw home in the other direction. Go ahead and press. So flatten. Don't use glute, though. There you go. Rest. Good. Go ahead. And rest. Nice. Go ahead. Rest. One more. And rest. Is that okay? Yeah. It's pretty good. Let's see you. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good bounce. It's still not as smooth as your other side, but it's more than what we started. That's pretty good. See how the ER looks? This side. That's way cleaner, actually. That okay? Mm -hmm. awesome. I'm just curious about the ankle. Yeah. You kept that. I mean, that's definitely more than what we started. It might be 15 even without cheating. Still a lot of eversion. Big toe is not going. I'm just curious. But you do have a bunion, so I might limit your extension capabilities. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you get a little bit of movement. Why don't you go ahead and stand up, try your squat now, and just see how you feel after I did all of that. Hang on. Go for it. How are we doing? Good, actually. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Okay. Yeah, I, we need to get you knee extension, so I'm going to show you something for that. Now, although knee extension is typically associated with tibial external rotation and distal femoral internal rotation, I opt to flip it and reverse it, as the great philosopher Missy Elliott so eloquently stated. And the reason why? Okay, I've been at a loss of tibial IR. And the cool thing, 
no freaking pain or at least minimal pain on the squat. So that was great. Even though we didn't get a dramatic change in his knee extension range, he still has a lot more on his right in comparison to his left. Got some pretty rock solid improvements. And so as you're going to see in this next move, I'm going to give him an activity that basically reinforces that movement behavior. And we're going to see if we can get some further change in how he feels. So me and my main man, K-Train, we're talking a bit off air. And um, go ahead and do your heel raise. You said that this was painful. And so what are you getting with that now? Initially. Awesome. So that's good. So typically Kevin is experiencing a bit more pain than, than typical with that. And so we can use that and the squat as basically our quick rechecks after this. Um, what I want is you're going to have, um, basically I want uh, tibial IR and distal femoral ER on this. So we're going to use the bands to help us get that. Okay. All right. Because it seems like you've, you don't have as much tibial IR, right? So um, I want to see if we can make that happen during the TKE. So what you're going to do is I want one band, since, since we're going to be left side, pulling you, uh, I totally said that wrong. This one's going to be low, so that way it's pulling you into tibial IR. And then you want the other one up higher, pulling you into tibial ER. So it's going to look like that. Kind of like a counter. Yeah. Uh, in a way, yeah, basically. So it's basically passively prepositioning you there. Yeah. And then what you're going to do is you're going to um, pull it back like that so it's got a little bit of tension for you to do um, knee extension into, right? right? So I want your right foot as best you can a little bit ahead of the left. You want to soften both knees. Really feel that heel on the left, so left inside. And then you want to just try to isolate as best you can to the quad. So I don't want you like arching or you know, squeeze and glute to get it, and just go slow, back and forth like this. As I'm doing it, I'm keeping this right knee bent, right? So you're going to feel medial quad kicking in as you do it, all right? So it's just that back and forth, and then we'll recheck squat, and we'll recheck, uh, um, whatchamacallit, uh, heel raise, all right? Let's see what you got. So that's going to pull into ER, the top one, and then the bottom one's going to pull into IR. Yep. Huh. Wonder who's here. So you want right foot a little bit ahead? What up, Coach Francis? Chilling. Let your knees bend. All right. You can hang on to something, too. I don't want you, like, slouching, right? right. There. Go ahead. Should feel quad, yeah? Yeah. Awesome. Let's do about 30 of them. Am I getting 40 seconds? No, but you're getting enough. So here's what it looks like from the side. So I want to try to minimize glute activity on this to really try to isolate it to the knee like that. You got heel. Yep. Get a little bit more right knee bend. Yeah, so keep the right knee bent. So you're straightening both. There you go. Yep. Awesome. It's going to look just like that. And we'll burn it out. Good. Just make sure your foot stays flat. Is my right lifting? Uh, your left was a little bit. Yeah. Nice. Good. Yeah. You getting a decent burn in the quad? Yeah, buddy. Quad City DJs. It's good. Sure. Go until I get tired. <laughs> until I get tired. I'm well caffeinated, so we're good. Nice. That's good there. All right. Go ahead and um, try your heel raise after that and your squat. And we'll just go kind of go right over here. How's that? Better. 
Better? Sweet. Tiny bit better? Go ahead and try your squat. Ah, side view. Let's go side view. Either way. How's that feeling? Pretty good? Awesome, man. That's good. Let me just check knee extension on that table right there and we'll just, we should be good with that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna check really quick just to see if you're able to, to get it. Uh, nah, nah, we can, we're good. It's not gonna impact that much. Yeah, I mean, it's still not as good as your other side, but it's more than what we started with. Actually, it, that feels comparable. You actually got a little bit less on, the, on that side, which I'm okay with. Kind of evening out the demand sort of thing. Yeah. It's pretty good. So I'm thinking we're gonna start with those three. All right. Can you dig it? Yep. Questions for me about anything? No. Sweet. Let's go buy some bands. And that's how it's done. So overall, K-Tran did pretty well. That's what I gave him for his home program were those three moves. So he's doing the hook line tilt offset with a hip shift. He's doing a lateral squat just on the left side and then the terminal knee extension. And although I think those will get him far, we gotta look at the activity that Kevin is going to be going back to, which is Olympic lifting. So I wanted to try to do as much as I could to ensure that he's got a successful return. And so with that, I made a few other recommendations. The first one that I actually made was shoe wear. And so Kevin, he loves to wear flats and he actually has some shoes that are zero drop. And those are good for some people, not for Kevin. And here's why. If I got a flat sole or something that's zero drop, that's going to drive more dorsiflexion and eversion, which guess what, folks? That is Kevin's bias. And so we have something that he's going to be wearing all day that's going to be reinforcing that bias. I want to get him out of that bias. Moreover, the other issue is you've noticed, and I didn't really mention this much, but Kevin doesn't have much big toe extension. Like I think we got him up to 20 degrees on the left. And the other side, that wouldn't budge. It may be that that's structural. I don't know. But if you got a flat sole or a zero drop, chances are they're going to have a very flexible toe box, meaning he's going to go into big toe extension that he doesn't have. So I want something with a stiffer toe box. That way we can circumvent the loss of big toe extension, which could likely be structural. So for that, I recommended Hoka's, which those are much stiffer shoes. They're very stiff all around. I think those would be a good strategy for him to employ. If he wants to get really fancy, you can get orthotics made where they put a steel bar underneath the, the big toe so that way it doesn't have to go into extension. But, again, that's a little bit more of an aggressive strategy, more costly. He'll probably do okay with just the Hoka's. Now, after that recommendation, we went into some training ideas that we could also utilize to help Kevin get mo better. Now, folks, he can box squat without issues. He's been box squatting. He came to me. His measures weren't worse. So I'm not going to take anything away. Like, we're not going to get, you know, all like, oh, just stay on the ground for whatever, anything like that. Like, that's contrary to what the Internet says with some people. That's not how we roll on this side of things. So I'm going to let him do activities where he's moving some heavier weights because he seems to do okay with that. But I am going to change some of his accessory work. I'm going to make it a little more asymmetrical so that way we can drive some of the pelvic changes that we need, albeit at a higher intensity. And so the moves that I recommended were a left lateral squat with right arm load. Everything's going to be right arm load because if I have a weight in my right hand, it's going to pull me right. I got to fight it by turning my body to the left. So I'm going to have a lateral squat on the left, a right split squat, right arm load, because both of those are going to get that left turn. And then I also recommended a left TRX single leg squat to a box. The box is going to help us sit back so that way we can recapture some internal rotation. And then I'm going to give him a right step up with a right arm load. And that's because in, with a right step up, he's going to have to recruit glute max to turn the pelvis more so to the left. And so I just wanted him to have those accessory moves. It's a bit asymmetrical, 
but I think it's going to help him in the long run with some of his ankle stuff. Now, the other thing that I recommended for Kevin just upper body wise is I think if he does some single arm push presses with head turns, that way we can just drive that last bit of shoulder flexion that he needs and alternating lat pull downs just to keep the dynamic ISA at play. He's probably going to do pretty well. And so we'll, we'll see how he does with some of these recommendations. But overall, I thought it was a really good session. We got some nice changes in range of motion. And most importantly, his squat felt better. His heel raise felt better. Life is good. Now, I talked through a lot of different things. And you probably had seen me coach him in a certain way. And you're like, man, Zach, you, you seem to get him where you wanted to be very quickly. Is there a way that I can do that? And the answer is yes. The answer is coming to my seminar, Human Matrix, which is going to be featured in a, quite a few places, folks. We're going to be in uh, Seattle, Washington, May 28th and 29th, if you're watching this in 2022. Boston, I'm going to be August 6th and 7th. I'm going to be in Slovenia, October 15th and 16th. I might have another one coming, so stay tuned on that one. But I would love to see you there because with that seminar, you're going to learn some of this process in terms of how I decide on specific exercises. So that way you can be laser-like with your selection, which is going to save you time. It's going to allow you to get the movement results that you want. It's going to get your clients feeling better. Who doesn't want that? If you don't want that, then don't sign up for the seminar. But if you do, definitely check it out. Link is in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for tuning in. You've been an incredible, outstanding audience. I hope that you keep it real, but not the extent where things go wrong. Stay hungry, stay learning, stay moving. And I'll see you next time. Deuces.